welcome to Alchemy Mindset. I'm your host, Anna Hasty, business mindset coach for women and a sound healer. If you are ready to become the most aligned, magnetic, and confident businesswoman you are worthy and deserving of being, then this show is for you. This is where I share everything from mindset, energy, and spirituality, and how to embody your future self in business and life. Sprinkle that with deeply relaxing sound healings and meditations, and you have the Alchemy Mindset Podcast. Hit subscribe so you always get the latest episode. Now let's begin. Hello, dear listener, and welcome to this episode where I'm interviewing a dear friend and seasoned beauty therapist, Livia McKenzie from Livy's. Originally, this interview was recorded as one episode, but on playback, I decided to split it into two episodes just so I could do my interview with Livia full honor and justice. Livia McKenzie, originally from the Scottish Highlands, found her home here in Sunny Broome, and after a few years of working for a very well-known resort day spa, which is actually where we both met, ventured out on her own to create Livy's a business that is more than just a place of beauty therapy, but offers an elevated experience of seamlessly blending the precision of a clinical service with the serenity and indulgence of a spa-like experience. Livia's approach to her services is rooted through her education and qualifications, enabling her to offer a fully holistic and personalized approach. And from my personal experience, Liv really does offer the most dreamy treatments and her knowledge, care and integrity to her profession is what makes her a standout therapist and why I absolutely trust my skincare in her very, very capable hands. This is the first part of our interview in which Livia really showcases her knowledge and education within the beauty industry. In our conversation, we discuss the emotional well-being that is tied to skin health, the misinformation that is out there surrounding skincare potential harm of DIY skin treatments and the need for accurate knowledge, the intense pressure placed on health and beauty, particularly among the younger generation, which personally I felt was a really helpful area to talk about. And being a mum, I know this is something I will have to be able to guide and support my own daughter. We also talk about the hot topic in the industry of injectable cosmetic procedures like fillers and Botox why education and regulation in the beauty industry is currently shifting to protect consumers and practitioners alike, social media and body image, and the need for better education for beauty professionals and stricter industry regulations. Liv also offers some really helpful alternatives to current mainstream beauty therapy treatments that are more holistic for the overall health and well-being of her clients. Liv also shares some of the alternatives that are out there to current mainstream beauty therapy treatments that are, have a more holistic approach and benefit of the overall health and well-being of her clients. And just stick around to the very end where I just feel that Liv sums up the episode with some really beautiful reminders and helpful points. I just want to add here that in this episode, we do brush on topics such as body dysmorphia, eating disorders, and the mindset around current skin and cosmetic procedures. If this is something that you are currently navigating and that you would find this as a trigger, this episode might not be for you right now. So thank you for joining me and Liv in this episode. Now let's begin. Hello, hello. Welcome to the Alchemy Mindset Podcast. I am just so thrilled to have you here today. And guess what? To the listeners who can't actually see us, Liv and I are sitting next to each other having this conversation, which is super cool because usually it's over Zoom or, you know, the internet, but because we actually live in the same town, we know each other quite well, we're like, just let's hang out, have a chai, catch up and chat. Yay. Thank you for having me. Thank you for inviting me on. I'm so pleased that you're, yeah, (laughs) that we're having this chat today because I think what you've got to share is just really beneficial and helpful to everybody out there who's, you know, either, you know, invests regularly within their skin health and their own body, as well as like for someone like me who's a mother and has got a daughter who will one day be 
influenced or inspired or whatever it is by what it's been deemed as, I don't know, what, what are you want to say? The trends. The trends, thank you, that is the word. <laughs> I feel like this is really inf- important information that you're here to share and I'm so glad that you just were able to do this today. Yeah, it's so exciting. Thank you. Yeah, so let's start from the start. Tell us your story about becoming a beauty therapist and then leading into running your own business. Yeah. Well, it happens. It was 20 years ago and I'm only, thank you, I was only... <laughs> I'm 36 now, so I was 15, and it kind of is a little story about fate. So I was back in school to do my last two years. I'd enrolled in all these hires, and my friend, she finished. So in the UK, we finish school before the summer holidays. So Mm -hmm. here, you finish before Christmas, but we start in August, September is the start of our school year, not like Jan, Feb here. Yeah. So... My friend, she'd already left school before the summer and she was going to do beauty therapy in college. But yeah, I was already signed on. I was back to school, back to my classes and things. Not loving secondary school, love primary school, love learning, but secondary school is just like the opposite of primary school for me. And it wasn't about learning, it was more about rebelling. (laughs) So I wasn't going to learn too much. Uh, But anyway, my friend, she was going to college to the induction day or week I can't remember now so I said I'd go along with her and they're like oh we've had someone drop out and we have space and I'm like thinking to myself at gymnastics people would like ask me to paint their nails or do their makeup and I like massaging we've been to like a nursing home and massage people's hands and I just really loved it so I'm like okay I want to leave school and I'm going to do this because I'll absolutely love it took a while to convince my parents who wanted me to go to university and be like a doctor or whatever they want you to aspire for you to be but eventually they just said if it makes you happy then do it Mm -hmm. so yeah I left school 15 got them to sign me out started college I was three years full-time in college to do my diploma beauty therapy where I think over here people can do a diploma in like less than a year yeah so I don't know how that works but I covered like all grounds the first year was a national certificate because I was so young and yeah it's just expanded from there I loved everything every kind of angle from it I used to do like nail enhancements like like a nail technician tanning facials I loved massage didn't always do a lot of it and then after I'd been working for a few years in a beauty salon doing all that kind of stuff I thought it was time to spread my wings and fly which took me to the cruise ships which I wanted to do massage on they initially send you out and choose what kind of thing you're going to do on the cruise ships um which was like this detox treatment where I have to give seminars yeah like it's a whole different story like that world but I really love the massage so I went back on doing massage found myself in Broome years later to travel worked with yourself I know right this is where we met <laughs> this is where we met at the in the spa at Cable Beach Club here in beautiful Broome yeah and just Broome and Australia in general is just really good for everything holistic and spiritual and you can really delve in so many different aspects and coming from the highlands of Scotland where there probably wasn't too much of anything in that kind of realm there's a lot more now obviously but yeah like I've just kind of spread out and gone fully holistic and become qualified is the word I'm trying to find in all aspects because we generally work holistically anyway but you need to be qualified before you can for instance recommend things for nutrition or know what where you can and cannot recommend things or who you can and cannot say things to because they might have a medical background and a lot of people might recommend something to someone where they're not qualified to and they might have a negative consequence because of some medical condition Mm -hmm. that they hadn't been aware of for instance yeah so I studied, been studying for maybe the past, I don't know, seven odd years consistently with running a business. Yeah, so share us, share with us, like, what do you feel like you specialize in now? Because you don't just do beauty treatments, you also add other elements of what you do into your treatments or your yeah. services, right? Yeah. I'm a bit of like a spa kind of vibe because I'm always about relaxation. Mm-hmm. So, yes, you get that wonderful pampering 
relaxing, beautiful feeling with your massage or facials. Even if we're doing microneedling, there's an element of relaxation in there at the end, because why not? But on top of that, you get nutritional advice. If I feel we need to work on something like hypnotherapy, because you've got your psycho-emotional impact on skin. So I do a lot of skin clients. I practice corneal therapy, which is about maintaining the integrity of the stratum corneum, which is the most outer layer of skin at all costs. So I got rid of doing chemical peels, dermabrasion, which are still quite popular in this day, but long term, they can be quite aging on the skin. And in this sort of climate that we're in can be quite detrimental with like pigmentation. Yeah, so I love working holistically, getting the nutritional leads in, how are you feeling, just kind of getting to the root, bit of like counselling, basically, yeah. of whatever, whatever is needed, even if it's Reiki, like mm-hmm. Reiki infused into a facial, because that's what they're needing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I have to say, like, I can honestly vouch for the fact that you are you definitely embody that spa vibe and making sure everybody feels just so relaxed and so comfortable, even if you're doing <laughs> something like microneedling, right? Liv is literally like you cannot hear her moving around the room. Like she's so silent and you're just so attentive to people's needs and what they're needing in that session in terms of comfort. I think that's really, really it's always like a reason why I come back to see you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, because it is. Because, you know, beauty therapy can, I guess, have like in your industry different levels. Like you've got the spa kind of journey, relaxation, that time out for yourself, and then you've got more of that clinical side that's also yeah. there. But you bring both together. Like you mold or meld both together in such an amazing way. Yeah. And what I really admire about you is that you have over this time spent so much time improving your knowledge and learning the things that you know are going to be the most beneficial and helpful for your clients. Like, like you said, it's not just about skincare. It's like, what are you eating? Because that can affect your skin and your emotional well being and all sorts of things like that. And then you also have that um, element of the counseling through hypnotherapy and helping people to, I guess, change habits or behaviors, their mindset around themselves. Yeah. Perhaps. Yeah. Yeah. Like, for example, I had a client who we just did a very gentle hypnotherapy session, not focused around skin as such, but it was so calming on her nervous system that she said, like, she looked in the mirror a couple days later and she had quite inflamed acne skin, but she's like, my skin was just so calm, the redness has gone down, I just looked so different, and yeah, so you're... Skin, so it's like if you think about someone who gets embarrassed and their skin flushes, or if they're angry and the skin goes red, like that's a direct emotional visual that you can actually see Mm. that happens on the skin. Yeah, absolutely. And we all know that fact that when we look at ourselves in the mirror, we may not think nice things about ourselves because we are, we have developed this like inner critic within us about the way we look. And that impacts yeah. the way we feel. Yeah. And that all then drives through like our beliefs and our behaviors towards ourselves, right? Yes. And that's something that I feel like with what you do, you're helping to educate your clients through being much more loving and kind to themselves, but also using products. Like you said, you did like some really deep diving into skin health and products that can help get great results with the skin, but they aren't harsh. They're yeah. not abrasive. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so originally I was doing the whole treatments. Yeah, not like with doing chemical peels and hydrodermabrasion, but I was not getting the results I wanted. Mm. Some people, yeah, you got some results and it was good, but there are some clients that was just like, I'm not happy with how this is going. And so, I, yeah, I did a lot of research and then I kind of came across corneal therapy which is what the brand that I was working with used to pretty much be like about 20 years ago when I first was introduced into beauty therapy and what they worked about being really gentle because I myself actually when I was 15 and did my 
standard grade exams, I was so stressed that I actually had an acne flare on my cheeks. Oh, wow. And like any other teenager, you're going to get that exfoliator and you're going to try and scrub that off your face, which it just makes your skin even more inflamed. Even the quote unquote gentle <laughs> scrubs and exfoliants and treatments, it was just aggravating the skin further. Mm-hmm. So when I started doing beauty, they're like, nope, don't be doing this and teaching me what I was meant to be doing. My skin cleared up. And yeah, that the brand was always like that. But now I feel the brand is got like an exfoliant or peel in every single thing basically now but it has changed over company like the owners Mm. I believe but yeah so it's just coming back down to repairing that skin barrier healing the skin and allowing the cells and systems to function how they're meant to function and yeah getting the health inside getting the health from the outside and my clients like their skin just went next level yeah Absolutely. Yeah. I fully believe that. Like I do believe that it is a partnership within our body, right? So yeah. like you said, the internal health needs to be addressed. So what are you eating? How are you taking care of your um, like eating habits? Like are you drinking like a ton of coffee? Are you, you know, subjecting yourself to lots of cheeky drinks after work or, you know, eating highly um, – I don't know what kind of foods, processed, processed yeah. foods, thank you, that would might have a reaction – that is coming through your own skin health. Yeah. I know for a fact that for me, had I known what I'd known and maybe if my parents had been a more aware of what we know today in terms of like gut health and how that can influence our health and well-being overall, I think if my parents had – if we'd known that kind of information, maybe they could have got me like tested for like an intolerance or, you know, sensitivity to a particular food because when it was in my – late 20s early 30s that I it was just evident that something wasn't right with me and my skin was horrific like I was so embarrassed about the way I looked I'm like I'm 20 30 years old and I look like this like this is ridiculous like I look like a teenager that I went to a naturopath and she did a whole cleanse on me that I saw the results of how clear my skin could be from just shifting my diet. Yeah. Now, if I'd known that probably when I was in high school, when things, you know, obviously we've got hormones and that obviously also or can like influence and affect our skin health, right? Yeah, 100%. But I also feel like in there, there was this sensitivity or something around dairy, maybe even wheat that was just aggravating eggs even. Like yeah. I was always being avoidant of yeah. eggs growing up as a kid, but, you know, everybody eats scrambled eggs or, yeah. you know, eggs with soldiers. Yeah. But Yeah, if I'd known that, I think maybe my skin journey would have been completely different. Um, Yeah, so those three things that you suggested are definitely some of the most common sensitivities that can aggravate the skin and cause inflammation. Yeah, but there is a lot lot more information out there now. Mm. Probably a little bit too much and not always kind of scientific in a way that there's a lot of the influencers, influencers these days and they'll just spiel off a lot of sometimes correct but sometimes incorrect information as well Mm. so it's even more challenging for the youth now Mm. that they get so confused and overwhelmed what's what they should be doing or they like an influencer and they're going to go and do something very crazy and potentially dangerous and harmful to their health yeah like even those when everyone started doing the dermal planing on their skins and people get like infected skin and it's just like they're using on the wrong skin type or what is dermal planing i'm sorry i'm just uh, so it's basically like a scalpel where you just um shave off (gasps) your some of your skin layers and your hair that sounds Um, like it's like (laughs) close to scalping like what happened in basically cowboy cowboy times i don't know like wow so they literally get like it's like shaving your face except (gasps) from it's more you can take off a few more layers Mm. of skin so they're like oh you can look at you can take out basically your pores and the see like everything but that can open the skin up to infection wow. um, yeah so people do a lot of these what should be in clinic sort of treatments yeah. at home yeah i yeah even use someone that bought their own microneedling device and said oh i know what the person was using what depth they're using on my skin i'm like oh my gosh send that back right now you're not gonna use that on your skin because you're not qualified because mm. there's so much that can go wrong especially once you start using these more harsh treatments and what yeah, yeah. like because i'm like 
Not that I'm projecting anything onto Ava yet, and I know that when I get to this moment, I'm sure I'll just be able to navigate it as best as I can. But I do often like think, how is it going to be for her when she's like in those preteen years and teen years when she's, you know, noticing and seeing things around about health and beauty and stuff like that. I mean, we were talking about this earlier, like we grew up with magazines, right? Yeah. yeah. Like we grew up with like Hello Dolly or I'm not sure what you had in the UK, but I, I can't I, remember yeah, I think what they're called. We had Dolly. <laughs> there was definitely Dolly and then there was something else here in Australia. That were big magazines yeah. aimed at teenage girls and they were all like stories about beauty and how to look your best when you want to go out and how to like meet a guy and you know health and well-being questions all those how <laughs> to lose weight to when you're already skinny and get that thigh gap and yes face, like anorexic yeah. basically yeah. like that's what they were teaching back in those days <laughs> yeah and so for me like knowing that there's social media and there's so much more information that can come at all of us not just Ava ourselves in terms of this kind of stuff what are your thoughts yes yeah. Well, this is a really important point because since the evolution of social media and getting information out, the youth of today, there has been a spike in anxiety. Mm. People are looking at their screens and seeing all these flawless skins with all these filters and just people portraying almost false, falsifying beauty. So it's really challenging because now the youth think that they have to meet these standards like they can't have a nose too big they need to make their cheeks bigger they need to make their chin smaller or bigger or their jawline get some filler along their jawline they, maybe they need an eyebrow left and now they, they need to thread their cheeks up and now they need to get their bigger and their hips mm. like their waist smaller like it's just never never ending but Hopefully by the time Ava is older, because I feel like we've kind of just gone 100% in one direction, where the authorities are starting to crack down on what you can do for advertising for per se. Mm. So hopefully Ava, when she reaches that age, the excess of knowledge and everything will be kind of more studied and mm. this is what you should be doing or what you shouldn't be doing. For instance, the TGA recently, this is quite big news, the TGA Therapeutic Goods um, Authority, they announced a ban, end of December, January of this year, of using the term in the cosmetic world of anti-wrinkle injections Mm. and dermal filler. Mm. So this is talking about your botulinum toxin. People will know it as Botox, but that's a brand name. Yeah, right. And dermal filler... I don't know what they'll be calling that for advertising. And I believe that they're not allowed to use brand names anyway in advertising. I don't know what they will be allowed to use, but because it is medicine, so it's not just something that you can get willy-nilly from everywhere, which Australia is really good with their standards because you need to be a nurse minimum. Mm. Not sure if that they're going to make that even higher to only doctors for these injectables. But in the UK, you can go to anyone who's just done a little course, basically. Mm. So at least Australia's got that good standard yeah. in their own place. Since the start of January, or whenever they put this out, the page is actually being reviewed. So mm. it will be interesting to see what the new revision will be. Yeah, Because I know it caused a big stir in the cosmetic industry of yeah, what, what are we going to say then but that's really good because yeah it is it's kind of like you know cigarette smoking so they're not allowed to show them anymore and so our children who are highly 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 influential yeah they're going to be they want these things they're 13 years old wanting to get lip filler i've had clients who are teenagers who've already had lip filler and so at that age, body dysmorphia is way more than people in their 30s or 40s. People, when you start to be like, oh, I looked so good back then. I always thought I had like, <laughs> I had fat or I had like not big enough lips or for me, I hated my nose, but I love my nose now. Like I always thought I want, I had this, even like with partners, I was like looking at their nose and examining their nose. It was just like this obsessive mind that you have when you're younger mm. and these things. But also the worrying factor with things like your filler, studies are starting to show now, like there's been a preliminary study on filler showing that 
Even the hyaluronic acid, the quote-unquote, if nobody can see me here, so my fingers are quoting, <laughs> the hyaluronic acid, which is natural, but it's not completely natural because it's cross-linked. Mm-hmm. It's not the same structure as what's in our natural body. So it doesn't break down like your normal hyaluronic acid in your body. And the studies are showing now that it's blocking the lymphatic system. Mm-hmm. Now, the lymphatic system is an integral part of your health. Absolutely, yeah. Your lymphatics is what removes waste. So whether that's endogenous or exogenous, like so whether your cells, the natural waste product and material coming out or like just fighting off infection, removing the unnatural hyaluronic acid that's cross-linked from your body to then be filtered out. So this is getting, showing studies now that, it's not Being going down. that far. Yeah. And so they need to, there's going to study further, research further, in, to see if filler affects risk of disease such as cancer. Mm. Now, if teenagers are starting to get filler at 18 and then they're getting that fairly frequently. Now, they used to say filler lasts 6 to 12 months. Because the body breaks it down, Mm. which MRIs now show that can last 36 months. Even like top surgeons who do like facelifts and like they'll have someone who's not had filler for over five years and they've got all the gel like substance just seeping out of the skin. (gasps) And you see like all the celebs with the puffy face. Mm. So like it tends to sort of migrate some areas of the face it'll break down and metabolize fat you know well like where is this going and is it going to cause an immune response somewhere down the line can you get an infection and yeah, there is you, yeah when you think about it like if there's gel sort of still sitting yeah. underneath your skin yeah and that gel isn't natural yeah. what is it doing like is that a toxic substance that's leaking into say your circulation and then filtering and being like What's the word like being backed up somewhere in your body that does cause other further like illnesses or diseases? Well, I think that's all fairly new, and they need to research that further. Mm. Now, I would say like this is not my field. I'm not in the medical or cosmetic um, field at all, but it is worrying to see and watch. I've never. I'm 37 this year. I've never had Botox or filler because I believe in the more natural. Um, holistic approach. Yes, I have fine lines, but who doesn't? Do I? I I'm not. I don't. Not overly bothered, to be honest. I would say just to the listeners as well. Like Livia has the most refreshing, most youthful skin that I've ever come across. Scottish. <laughs> <laughs> she really does. Like Liv, you really do walk your talk. Like you take great care of your health, and you and it's and you take great care of your skin, and it just shows. Like yeah. you're a living example of yeah. what you truly believe. Well, I try to. I'm not always perfect. (laughs) But yeah, I do. I learn as well. Okay, so if I've been eating a lot of certain foods, Mm. then especially here in Australia, I don't know why, like compared to the UK, bread in particular, like I'll start getting breakouts if I start eating too too much of that. Yeah, which is very common here. A lot of Europeans will come to Australia, eat the bread and get gut gut Mm. issues. Mm. I don't know if it's because they pour the gluten is much higher in the breads here than in Europe, for instance. Mm. But anyway, that's like a whole other... Conversation. Other hour, like, conversation. Where were we before that? (laughs) Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I do notice when I am eating the best, Mm. my skin, I'll feel like I'm, I'm like, 16 years old again. Mm -hmm. But then if I'm having late nights or if there's lots of social stuff and maybe have a drink or, like, some processed or fatty or I find if I go to restaurants and they're so oily that those kind of foods and you can really see it in the skin and then coffee, too much coffee um, yeah so it's definitely goes hand in hand yeah absolutely um, and it's not about being perfect no not at all like we're human and we yeah. get to enjoy life but there is this essence of mindfulness in yeah. a way and I think going back to even what you're saying about like people getting these fillers and that it's not breaking down this research is really important yeah because without this knowledge people is like you know you were saying to me the other day that people are getting these procedures done but it's not it's changing the shape of their face initially but because it's not breaking down it's then migrating to other areas of their face and then 
all the effects that it comes on that. It's like a continual cycle of trying to like look better, be better, but in actual fact, it's not need. Like maybe you don't need to do these fillers or Botox. Maybe it's about embracing yeah. your own inner beauty, working on your mindset, so that which yeah. is what you do, like your hypnotherapy. Yeah. Maybe there's other stresses in your life that are causing these, you know, issues that you're not enjoying about your face. Yeah, and and looking at all from that holistic response yeah. right absolutely and i'm not like against people getting botox or mm-hmm. filler mm-hmm. i mean i do believe less is more mm. but they this is a psychological effect that i'm more concerned about for the youth so what are you teaching them for instance korea which is seems to be like where everyone goes to for their beauty standards the parents basically tell the kids they're ugly and to go get treatments and surgeries and all of this so yeah we're teaching our children saying to them you're ugly you're not good enough Mm. unless you look like x y and z yeah and start comparing yourself to someone else and not really just like it is it's just like not having that love for yourself yeah appreciation i can certainly remember growing up as a kid the number of times I went into a change room with my mum when we were like out shopping with her and she'd choose some clothes and she'd go stand in the mirror and we'd all sit there and, you know, you'd have to wait while she tried on like, you know, 10 million clothes. And then most of the time she was like, oh, I feel so fat in this. Like I look so fat. Like okay. she would like yeah. in the mirror commenting on her body shape and size in front of two young girls. Yeah. Like that sticks into my mind so vividly that sometimes I go into the shops, you know, and you're standing in front of the mirror going, gosh, I look like my tummy or like I'm commenting on myself. Yeah. Where I've now gone, all right, well, that probably wouldn't be a very good thing to share with Ava. So if we ever went shopping, make it in my best mind to like just internalize those thoughts if that's how I'm going to feel. But celebrate what I do look like yeah. like you know look I'm buying some new clothes and I feel great in them even within my own mindset practices like I know we're talking about size here and not necessarily facials or beauty or whatever but it's kind of all it's goes all head. Head. Yeah. like to totally disregard the size on the label of the clothes that I'm choosing because even that in itself can make us feel conscious about our size right? yeah I, I was like that as a teenager I m- remember being horrified going up from UK size six to an eight and I was highly influenced by the size zero, zero, whatever it is, the thigh gap era. So, like, I remember, like, measuring my waist being, like, 20, I don't know, 25 inches or something. Which, which is, is tiny. actually tiny. I was tiny. That's just, tiny. And let's just be clear, though, I didn't think I was fat at that age. Mm. I was quite happy about my body. I was very good at gymnastics and um, eating eating well. I was vegetarian at that age. But because of the influence and things like that Big Brother and all the, the, that kind of stuff was coming out and people were putting lots of fake tan on or being, like, super skinny and basically, like, anorexic. So um, the generation of Paris Hilton and Nicole Richie, when, they, like, she got super, super skinny. Mm. And, yeah, so I remember reading a magazine. It was, like, Paris Hilton's measurements and I'm like I must lose an inch on my waist to get to that and I like I was eating like 600 calories a day and going to the gym for like two and a half hours on the cross trainer like that's not sustainable really I know (laughs) but like I wasn't even like overweight or anything but it's just your mind you're so influential at that age so I believe getting these kind of procedures done should be a minimum age of Something like 25. Even 25 is young. Oh, 100. And, like, I was still making heinous mistakes at 25 for good and bold decisions. <laughs> I can think like, of one that we won't repeat, right? Oh, gosh. But anyway, like, um, when you're 18, you only just become an adult. You're like, oh, my gosh. Mm. All these things I've been told I'm not allowed to do. I want to go do them all. Mm. And then you're, like, still finding yourself until like you're basically in your 30s mm-hmm. absolutely your 20s are there to make mistakes yeah and, and to learn to mess it. around you with your body mm. physically like you've got all these influencers who are doing like three times bbls and then their lips are so big that they look like they've had 10 bee stings in them <laughs> 
basically, but they want them bigger and they want it more and more and it's extra and extra. And all my influencers, my followers would love this. And like these young eyes that are absorbing all of this, it's just, the world's gone mad. I think robots are probably more human-like than humans these days. Yeah. But anyway, so what is the solution? Well, it's good that the authorities are becoming more strict Mm. and they're going to be doing more, hopefully, long-term studies on these kinds of things. And definitely more that awareness and knowledge for that the general public can digest and understand. I think that's the biggest thing. And that's one thing I know that you have taken under your own professional, like, training and career is to make sure you know what you know so you can educate your clients in the best way possible to help them be more aware of all these things and be more holistic and... Yeah. 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 So, like, what can you do? So prevention is better than cure. So if you are having, like, difficulties with your skin, then seek out a therapist that you feel has got your vibe, someone that's got looks like they've got integrity because mm-hmm. I'm in the beauty industry there's not a lot of integrity unfortunately it's people just want to make money and just these fast results but it's not long-term health for your skin so yeah what I do I work with like customizable skincare that's very gentle it's been designed for the most irritated skins which is what I love so something that's calming and healing another thing that I love is LED light therapy That's been used in the industry for such a long time Mm -hmm. and it's not got UV rays, so it's not going to be like the sun will damage your skin, but it's so healing. I've like, that's my number one go to. I would choose that over exfoliating or anything. Yeah. So, and also you just get to lie there and relax and I pretend (laughs) that someone's massaging me. (laughs) Maybe like my treatment. Then the latest thing that I'm doing was microneedling. Now, I researched things for a long time. I wasn't overly sold on it initially, but it is fantastic. It took me a good couple of years researching it and asking questions and being like, "Mm, humming and hawing. Mm -hmm. But it is really good. Once the skin is properly prepped, so you're not putting things, non-physiological ingredients like fragrances, even you've got to be careful with people with filler, with hyaluronic acid filler in their face if they have too much because... It can cause a reaction in the skin, just like if you have a natural thing. So you don't want to needle things into your skin, ingredients mm-hmm. that are non-physiological. So we're very strict with how we do microneedling. So we're not putting all these gold potions and, oh, we're going to just like needle this into your skin. We absolutely don't do that because the immune system, you're opening up the skin for the immune system and an immune response. Mm-hmm. So... But it is highly effective for stimulating the natural type collagen that you have within your skin when you're you're youthful and not like a scar type collagen that can be caused by these heat treated, like radio frequency, for instance, can cause a bit more scar tissue. So that creates a little bit more rigidity. So maybe use that when you're older like 55 sort of plus there's ways of going around utilizing that into your your program anyway but also diet so how are you nourishing your body from the inside out Mm. how are you feeding your gut microbiome i find people aren't eating enough veggies (laughs) and aren't eating enough greens and even like just a lot of your micronutrients there's a lot that people aren't supplementing or even like being careful around that I think it's good to have that multivitamin. I choose a plant-based multivitamin just to cover all grounds. Mm. Things like iodine, people don't think about that. That's your thyroid health. That's also your skin health and brain health. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But too much of that, depending on what you are eating, can be detrimental as much as too little of that. But people never really think about that as a micronutrient that's beneficial to them. Um, Yeah, so how are you feeling psycho-emotionally? How are you... Are you feeling stressed? Are you angry? Are you getting enough sleep? Yeah. Another treatment, actually, I forgot, that I do is the Neolift face sculpting and the buccal massage. Yes. So this one's fantastic for those who are very stressed, teeth grinding 
I do the buccal massage as well on my massage clients and it's been very, very effective because a lot of people are now doing Botox for their TMJ disorder. So once you've injected your masseter, then you have to do your temporals and it can get pretty expensive. And then you're making the muscle atrophy. It's great, absolutely great for acute instances. But what is your long-term... Are you going to be doing this, injecting this every three months for the rest of your life? Mm. But what are you going to start doing whilst you're doing that? I mean, how are you going to start doing some therapy, maybe some counselling, hypnotherapy? Yeah, because there is a reason why you're clenching your teeth yeah. or you're grinding your yeah. teeth or you're experiencing J, yeah. right? Like that's not just something that just happened. It's, a, it's an effect of something emotionally yeah. that is happening in your life, right? Yeah. Yeah, and so with medicine, it generally helps to block a function happening within the body. Mm. So with Botox, it's blocking the nerve response. So acetylcholine at the end of the nerve, it blocks that, and so that you can't. It kind of paralyzes the muscle, basically, mm. which is fantastic for therapeutic use, of course, and sort of mild cosmetic use mm. not going over like overboard with it and not being able to show people that you're crying <laughs> for instance I should laugh about that but it is amusing to me but I don't have tears there's a sweat coming <laughs> out of my eyes what's happening to their face yeah. are you crying are you laughing what's going on <laughs> but anyway so the the buccal massage is fantastic for helping to release that releasing the anger people feel a lot more relaxed afterwards your face feels relaxed Mm. you might even have a bit of a emotional response afterwards just letting it all out Mm. and then so once you start doing this okay well how can I manage and self-regulate myself even going to see a naturopath claw jaw clenching oh my gosh can even be related to parasites yeah wow in the naturopath world so maybe going to get a full holistic checkup with a naturopath and yeah like it's just all this self-help is good for every angle and aspect of your life mm. so everyone should just everyone really is doing a lot these days but it's, it's almost like what I see with you as well it's not like I'm just going to stick a band-aid over this problem yeah we're just going to try and get a quick fix so you can feel better about yourself in this moment. Yeah. It's about let's look at this in the long-term game because this isn't an overnight success. Yeah. Like improving your skin health. We all know that skin has to regenerate, right? And we're a living, breathing organism. Yeah. Like, it's not – we're like a plant. Like a flower doesn't just grow instantly unless you put like a ton of maybe fertilizer on it. I don't know. But, <laughs> but you know, it takes a while. Like it's got to get the roots in there and then the sun and the water. And it's the same within ourselves. Yeah. But we all want that quick fix, right? Yeah. That's all we want. But without sometimes having to do the inner work because the inner work can sometimes be that thing, that's the hardest thing to acknowledge, to understand or to release and heal because it can be painful. Yeah. But at the end of the day, the pain that we live in, and this is something I I sort of um, feel is that as human beings, we've learned to live with pain long term. Yeah. Without going, well, it may I may experience short term discomfort within my life for healing something to get long term gain of peace and happiness and joy within my life. But I'd rather not go through that process and just live with the pain and just try and find band aids to stick yeah. over it. That's the thing, like, I guess as well, some people aren't ready to do, Mm. aren't in a position perhaps to be doing the self-help. Maybe they're just so busy as a parent and just like need that quick fix and that's okay. But just knowing that there are other ways of looking at things and if you are in that space and would like to, then there are other options mm. as well. It's not dissing anything sort of like cosmetic or medical as a whole, but trying to just find that holistic and where are you in the equation and what can you do? Because at the end of the day, if you're not going to do it and you can't, don't have frame of mind for it yet, then that's okay. Mm. It all has its place. We're all constant work. <laughs> we are. Until we die. I, uh, I do believe that, 100%. Wow, Liv, I have just absolutely loved our conversation today. I'm sure all the listeners 
are going to just feel so much more enlightened and educated about the beauty industry, health and well-being, how to take care of themselves. Yeah, absolutely. And it's the age of information, really. It is. It is. Less is more. Prevention is better than cure. Mm-hmm. And just embrace and love yourself and the body that you have been given, the sacred vessel, mm-hmm. whatever you want to call it, whatever aligns with you. Learn to love yourself first. Do all your health care that's going to support and make you healthy. Health is first and mm-hmm. foremost. Absolutely. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so for having me. Yeah, I've loved it. This has been a great conversation. We should do this more often. Absolutely. <laughs> All righty. Well, if anybody's here in Broome and they want to experience an amazing facial massage, all the things that Liv offers, all her details are in the show notes below, and I'm sure you'll um, thoroughly enjoy meeting her if you do come to Broome or if you are here in Broome. Come see Livia. Amazing. Thank you so much, lovely. Thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening to today's episode. Please rate and review this podcast so that it can continue to thrive and reach more listeners. I love to know who my listeners are, so please screenshot this episode and tag me on Instagram at Anna F. Hasty. And I look forward to connecting with you in the next episode.